Changes to test chips, 12.9. In Norway, I get 108 gigs for 40. Oof. Yeah, but Finland's got really strong 5G. Because no one burned towers here. Yes, that's a lucky thing, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, change the test ship. Close test 12.9. Uh, based on the testing result, we're applying changes to Michelangelo, Independence, Yorktown, and Essex. Okay. Italian cruiser Michelangelo, tier 9. Reload time of the 90mm secondary guns increased from 3.2 to 3.5. Detectability range by C increased from 12.8 to 13.5. Other detectability ranges were increased accordingly. Change the parameters of the exhaust smoke consumable, increase the cooldown a lot, and uh, reduce the action time. So this is just nerfs across the board. Nerfs across the board. Mm. Interesting. Now, uh, the Michelangelo, I never, I've of course never gotten to play it, but like it's looked really interesting. For those who aren't aware, uh, that thing has absolutely absurd secondary DPM. And I wonder if this is in preparation of the captain changes that they're nerfing it. Because uh, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Uh, secondary is hitting DPM. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, Napoli secondaries are already scary. But Michelangelo secondaries are 50% on top. More than 50% almost on top of Napoli secondaries. They are completely fucking bonkers. I mean, they're bonkers enough. That if you add Schlieffen in here, Schlieffen sits here. Schlieffen sits here. So, so Michelangelo, like, secondary DPM is completely fucking nutter. Like, absolute nutter. Yeah, you can angle against it, but then you're angling against one cruiser. And if and if the person, if he runs at you with his smoke, smoke blazing, and those secondaries blazing, it's really brutal. So those things have gotten nerfed. Uh, and... Uh, those things have gotten nerfed, and the exhaust smoke has gotten nerfed. But obviously, this thing is going to get a gigantic buff in 12.1 when you get 20% extra range of those secondaries. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it plays, but it seems like the, the combination of smoke and that kind of secondary DPM seems really fucking brutal. The secondaries don't increase your um, smoke fine penalty. At least so far. We'll see if they change it one day. But but right now you can sit in a smoke and duck a ducka with those things. And that seems really, really obnoxious to deal with. Only 10% DPM. 10% is a big deal. 10% DPM nerf is a big deal. Hmm. Mm. Thank you, Orp. You will never use the full bandwidth of a 5G connection. Actually, I use my phone quite a lot for, for my laptop. Um, I, I, when, when, when I'm in different countries, I put my, 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 my phone on hotspot. And then I browse and download shit on, on Netflix and stuff on my, on my laptop. Because I basically, it's like having a really good Wi-Fi that you carry with you all the time. So, Meow Mir's girlfriend. Thank you. And thank you, Orpjavel. Jan Pavel for the 20. But yeah, American aircraft carriers, Independence, Yorktown, and Essex. Okay. Remove the preparation time for tactical attack aircraft and dive bomber squadrons at the start of the battle. They will now be ready to use immediately at the start of the battle. Ah! <laughs> Bro, remind me again why uh, every other ship in the game starts with their guns unloaded. Like, if you start a game, even in a fucking destroyer, you have to reload your guns before the game starts. Battleships have to reload their guns. Uh, destroyers have to reload their torpedo tubes. Everyone else, once again, it's a common theme, is that everyone else has to reload their shit. But apparently only the carriers understood that if they're entering a combat zone, they should probably have their shit ready to go. Like, <laughs> bro. Imagine, imagine having to wait a few seconds before you can dumpster the enemy. Apparently, that's not allowed if you're playing a carrier. That's not allowed. Very cool. Very, very cool. So, so they can, they can. Remember, tactical. These tactical attack aircraft are consumables. 
So now they can go in and scout and strike at the start without any penalty to their plane reserves at all, because what they're using is a consumable, a, a regenerating consumable, a never ending regenerating consumable. <sighs> what a shit design. <laughs> what? Every time we're giving down something to carriers, it's like, and you made it worse. How could you make it worse? It was already so bad. How do you pull this off? Thank you, Blackbeard, for the 15. You can use it for scouting early, then send another one after scout. Yeah, it's, it's like, bro, it's just so terrible. It's, oh. Sheesh. That is so stupid. But then again, it's carriers in World of Warships. The only thing dumber than carriers in World of Warships is submarines in World, in World of Warships. And both are completely off the walls than the... Okay. Mm. New ships. Close this 12.1. Update 12.1 or 12.10 brings three new ships. American Aircraft Carrier Independence, or they're only adding that one. Pan Asian Cruiser Tianjin is going to be a copy pasta, probably. An American Battleship Rhode Island. Okay. There's the Independence, the good old Cleveland Hull Independence. A fast light aircraft carrier built on the hull of a Cleveland class cruiser. Nine carriers of this class entered service in 1943, taking an active part in all US Navy operations in the Pacific during the last two years of the Second World War. Independence will join Yorktown and Essex as part of the upcoming US aircraft tech tree line. Aircraft carrier tech tree line. Ship is armed with torpedo bombers, which need less time to reach the optimal spread when dropping torpedoes compared to other carriers. Very, very cool. A single torpedo deals relatively low damage, but enjoys high speed. And I'm sure the guy being dropped also enjoys that high speed. Independence is also equipped with attack aircraft to fire a large number of HE rockets that have a good chance to start fires. As for the ship's dive bombers, they have relatively low penetration and fire chance values, but there are numerous bombs per attacking flight. Yay! The ship will have access to one standard squadron, torpedo bombers, and two tactical squadrons, attack aircraft and dive bombers, which will have jet-assisted takeoff. Why are, they, why are they putting jets on... Bro, how are they putting jets on fucking every single new CV that comes out, regardless of if it's a fucking Cleveland? Like Cleveland Hall. Like, hello, Independence? 1943 fucking carrier they're putting jet assisted takeoff on the ship and then when if you dare to mention hey wargaming uh could we get any of the radar or any of the aa technologies that were developed during this entire time like i don't know maybe like radar guided aa or maybe proximity fuse aa you know huge fucking leaps in aa technology could we get any of those no 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 no, 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 that's that's not okay. That's not okay. Only carriers get technological advancements. Everyone else deals with World War One fucking pom poms, throwing up flak in the general directions of the planes and hoping for the best. That's the best you can ask for. I'm sorry, not allowed. Jets on a World War Two light carrier. Yeah, like what the fuck? How do you even defend this at this point? Like, how does CV mains defend this at this point? This has gotten so far. From anything resembling fucking logic. <laughs> fucking jets on the world war II. What? what the fuck, man? This is so stupid. So fucking stupid. Additionally, independence can call upon a patrol fighter which can lock on quickly to enemy squadrons but suffers from a relatively low spotting range. Oh no, what a weakness. You can't spot everything at will with a consumable. No. As a result, these fighters take on more of a defensive and interceptive role. Ah, <sighs> my lord. Forty-two health. Yada yada yada. Maximum speed thirty-one point six knots. So it does, and of course, it gets the surface. It gets the surface conceal of like fully built Cleveland. It gets the speed of a Cleveland. Despite being a big fucking brick that can't burn and can't detonate. Seems good. <laughs> and I guess the tactical aircraft that do 200 knots. 
Torpedo bombers. Torpedoes in payload one. Size of attack by so it drops two at once, two x four. Two x four times it drops. Arming distance five hundred and seventy seven meters. Jesus Christ. This here it will drop at those on your broadside and they will do forty three knots. Cool. Tactical dive bombers. Forty two millimeters H E pen. What? Wait, didn't it say it had low pen? As for the ship's divers, they have relatively low penetration and low fire chance. Well, 35%. Okay, 42 millimeters at tier 6. Is there a single fucking ship that has more armor than that on their deck than 42? What? Is there anything at tier 6 that has... Hello? Even the Germans, do they even do they, even the Germans have that much armor? I think the Germans might be the only thing. I think Fuso is what? 35? Yeah, 35. So it pens all of Fuso. So it's gonna pen all of this. It's gonna pen I think all the Americans as well. They have nowhere near that. Like even the not, none of them have anywhere near that. They all get completely dumpstered by it. Even the Soviets, what about Soviets? No, even the Soviets get fucking penned. Uh, Bayern? No, Bayern has 40, that's what I thought. You guys are full of shit, Bayern has 40. There's not a single battleship. Oh no, Mackensen. Mackensen has 50 on this part. Everything else gets penned, of course, but this part... So if the bombs hit this part, you can get a shatter. Holy shit, bro. And Mackensen and Friedrich. Those are the only two battleships at tier 6 that can actually shatter with a part of their armor those bombs. And, and that's Wargaming's definition of a carrier suffering from low armor penetration, relatively low penetration and fire chance, 42mm pen, 35% fire chance. Wow, poor carriers, man. Why do they have to suffer like this? I, it, it's okay that they get fucking jet assisted takeoff when they're they're so weak, man. So weak. Oh no. I wonder what the HE pen actually is on, on like what is New Mexico's HE penetration on the on the main guns? HE pen 59. 59, but the fire chance is 30. The fire chance is 30, so you have more fire chance on those low fire chance bombs than you do on a fucking battleship main gun. Okay. Wow. But one bomb X payload? I don't know. It's one X, but size of attacking flight six. Oh, shit. Yeah, because it's a tactical squad. So you don't even get to enjoy shooting down anything. Uh, it, it goes in as one single tactical flight, drops six bombs and disappears. That's it. And it's it is, these ones are going to be jet assisted. So it takes off, drops, and fucking disappears. So both of these are fucking jet assisted. Wow. Th this one and this one. That's really cool. That's really cool. And the rocket strike is going to be 5x6, so 30 rockets. 30 rockets. With the 7% fire chance, which seems low, but then you remember it's 30 fucking rockets. Wow. Very cool, very cool. Of course. 60 second DCP. Equipment, of course it is. And reminder, it's a carrier, so it can't do that. Very important, very important. Tianjin, what the fuck are you? An Asian cruiser Tianjin. Interesting. Tianjin is armed with nine 220mm guns. 220. Looks like... Looks like a supersized Riga. Is this a Novosibirsk? <laughs> oh yeah, 27mm pen on these rockets, by the way. That's just enough to punch through almost all battleship armor and all the cruisers. Because no one has more cruiser armor at this tier. Huh. Cool. Very cool. So it, it, that carrier just paints everything with his HA. Nice. 
It's a Chinese Riga. It's just Riga? Okay. Good ballistics, accuracy, and shell penetration, but deal low damage per minute. The ship has good armor and large HP pool with low maneuverability. Fast damage control, repair party, and choice between fighter and wait, no radar. Good positioning is essential for Tianjin to unlock her full potential. If the maneuverability of the ship is lacking, it might not be so easy to escape unfavorable situations. Consistently landing your salvos from a medium distance would be considered optimal gameplay for Tianjin. What the fuck is this text? However, good survivability helps the ship take more damage than an average cruiser, which can help Tianjin prevail in certain close combat situations. In certain close combat. What the fuck is this text? Who writes these? <laughs> Who fucking writes these, man? 25 million plating, but it probably has the icebreaker. If it's a Riga. Prime range 19.3. Okay, that's really good. I don't think this is a Riga. Riga is... does. Let me look at that. No, I don't think that's a Riga. Where the fuck is this? There's a lot of similarities though. If no, it might actually just be like everything looks identical, even the fucking secondary dirt on top. I think it's once again it's their camera angle. It's they use the fisheye lens thing, which makes the ship look longer. I've complained about this before. It's the ship. No, no, it's not longer. I don't think it's longer. It's it's their weird fucking lens thing where they somehow their their fisheye lens, which makes the nose look a lot longer than it is. Yeah, it looks like the long the nose is longer, but uh, if you look at all the stuff on the superstructure, it's all identical. You see, it's all identical. I'm not sure if it's longer or if it's their weird fucking fisheye angle that stretches it. I think it's going to be their shit fisheye angle that makes it look stretched. Because they've done this before. And I hate their camera angle. It always looks wonky. It's it's a full copy-paste. Full copy-paste. Everything... Look at the stuff on the superstructure. Everything is identical. It's just a weird angle where they, they have a fisheye angle and then they like focus here. And then everything else gets compressed and stretched out. It's It's weird. The space from anchor is longer. No, it's not. No, no, it's their weird, weird fish islands taken from like this kind of angle. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a copy pasta. It's a full copy pasta. Everything on the superstructure is exactly identical. Chat, he hates me now. Citizen, no, I don't. I'm doing dead blog. Yeah, but no, uh, full copy pasta. Hmm. Identical shells then? 17.5 second reload. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Huh? What's the default rigor reload? Is it because it has better this maximum dispersion 166 at 19? It's slightly better dispersion. Doesn't seem that much better. It's slightly better dispersion. I think it might be just standard cruiser dispersion, maybe? I'm not sure if that's worth the 17.5 second reload, though. And the AP does less damage. 5550. Oh, I'm running heavy AP. I'm running heavy AP. That's what I thought. But still, then no, that's not that's more than five. I think standard isn't standard Riga like five seven fifty or something. So so it's got less damage and less reload in return for slightly better accuracy. I'm not really sure that's worth the trade off in a ship like Riga where you want to push in. Why else would you play a Riga? 
And you give up your fucking radar as well. Huh? Same shit in 920, 13, 4. 920, 11, 5. Wait, so wait, wait, wait. The rudder is worse? Or am I running? Is this like an old build where I run rudder? No! So you go from 11, 5 rudder to 13, 4 rudder. So you give up reload, AP damage, radar, rudder. What do you get in return? Slightly better dispersion at range? Huh? Junk. Junk. You get plain ASW, but Riga already has uh, plain ASW. It's same ASW. Whoops. It's same plain. It's same ASW chat. That's junk. That's junk. That's super junk. Does it even get hydro? No. Wait, no. It doesn't even have hydro. No Hydra, no defensive AA, no radar. Worse reload, worse AP damage, worse rudder shift. <laughs> How is that no junk? It's got to be a freemium. It's got to be some sort of freemium. They're going to stuff it into some stockings or it's going to be it's going to be some dog shit thing. This is the definition of a wish.com Riga. Mom, can we have can we have Riga? No, we have Riga at home. And this is Riga at home, man. Wait, oh no, no, this is the gimmick. Fast DCP actually. Wait, hold on, that's the gimmick, isn't it? Fast DCP. That's the other thing. So you trade normal DCP for fast DCP. But why would you want fast DCP if you don't have hydro radar and, and you got better long range dispersion? What, what's the benefit of going in? What? That makes no sense. And you don't want that on a cruiser at all because cruiser don't burn for long. You want to use DCP more often on cruisers. And what? Fast DCP on a cruiser sucks, as Sevastopol. Yeah, I know, it's awful. Fast DCP is much worse. And this is fast DCP on, fast DCP on a long-range cruiser that runs spotter play. So you're going to be sitting really far back, and you often want a DCP to go dark. Like, you want to put out the fire and go dark and reposition. And now you can, because you've you, you got a limited amount of consumables. This one is so much worse than Riga. This is like... Someone who's never played the game is asked to design a Riga. This is terrible! This is actually terrible! Wait, what the... Okay, wait, one second, one second. I like... Uh, let's see. Hmm... No, that's fine. Okay. I don't understand. This thing just seems uh garbage. I, I don't like no, no, just I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Just I see no benefit I like I don't even want to play this thing. Like if you want like okay, Riga's AP isn't that good. Riga's AP isn't that good at range. It's it's okay, but you don't really want to use it at long range. You want to push up closer where, where the AP actually smashes. And, and for that, you need consumables that support this, which is stuff like Hydro and Radar. 
And I don't, I un, I understand nothing about this shit. I don't understand. I, I don't want to, like, everything about this thing looks garbage. Like, absolute garbage. This looks like a fucking Wukong version of Charles Martel. It looks terrible. Yeah, it doesn't have Soviet cruiser dispersion. It has normal cruiser dispersion. So, so they somehow want you to play this thing at range, but then you have limited DCPs, which makes no sense. Why do you have limited DCPs if you're supposed to be played at range? Limited DCPs actually fits a very aggressive uh, cruiser, because that's when you want to burn through your DCPs quickly to stay alive and do as much as possible before going down. Like, look at Schlieffen. Like, it fits a, an aggressive playstyle. Uh, it doesn't fit a passive playstyle at all. And they're, they're, they're building this thing for a passive playstyle, and then they give it the fast DCP. It's, uh, what? I don't know if it gets the improved pen angles. I assume it's just copy-pasted Riga guns, because it's copy-pasted Riga. This thing looks super garbage, though. Okay, let's see. American Battleship. Rhode Island. Okay. Quad turrets? Quad turrets in this game tend to be really wonky. Honestly, in this game, uh, triple turrets are the best. Easily the best. Quad guns. Okay, how many? A battleship based on one of the variants of the 1938 fast battleship design, but with an alternative set of main battery we weaponry. The ship's main armaments consists of 356 millimeter guns. What? Wait. <laughs> Wait. 356 at tier 10. Hello? Uh, divided by 14.3. You don't overmatch 25 millimeters. So you don't overmatch light cruisers. You only overmatch super lights. You don't overmatch light cruisers. So you can have a Wooster sit nose in and tank you in this thing. Huh? Original plan for development in 1937 for the North Carolina class battleships. The ship is named after the state of Rhode Island, one of the first US states, and inherits the name from an old pre dreadnought battleship scrapped in 1923. Rhode Island is armed with 12 356, so it's got one more turret in the back. Uh, 12 356 main battery guns, a rather low caliber for a tier, that have decent accuracy thanks to improved dispersion and AP shells with improved ricochet angles. Okay, improved pin angle battleship at tier 10. That seems kind of a ball. The ship is also armed with a large number of relatively fast-firing secondary guns, but has overall low survivability for its class and tier. However, consumables are the strong suit of the ship, as she is equipped with an enhanced repair party consumable, with reduced reload time, so that's the 40 second cooldown one. A choice between fighter spotting aircraft or surveillance rip! <laughs> <laughs> The surveillance radar in the same slot. You know the worst part is a lot of fucking animals are gonna choose the fighter. Like this, this is this is the, this is like a World of Warships IQ test. You can choose radar, spotter, fighter, and if you're kind of retarded, you pick the spotting aircraft. But then if you're really really retarded, you pick the fighter. Because you see this all the time. A bunch of people running around with fighters in ship that can run radar. It's like you you failed a three point question. And you, you took the toddler wrong answer. You took the absolute full-blown retard answer and you chose it. And there's going to be people who do that. Guaranteed there's going to be people who do that. And, of course, engine boost on a separate slot. Bro, they really love engine boost nowadays. If, like, every, every single new ship that comes out is faster than DDs from, like, a couple of years ago. Because everyone has engine boost. Rhode Island's gameplay is closer to that of a battle cruiser, and she is mobile and can be very effective against destroyers and lightly armored ships, thanks to her accurate and fast firing guns. In close combat situations, the ship can maneuver through enemy torpedoes, while her secondary guns. 
Mm, thank you, Sanfabe. While well, well, her secondary guns can also deal good damage, and her save surveillance radar consumable can provide vision even through smoke screens. Whoa, is that how radar works? That's incredible. Making it difficult for enemy ships to hide. Yeah, did you know that radar in World of Warships can look through islands, smokes, other ships, friendly ships, enemy ships, uh, but it can't spot the submarine 2.3 kilometers next to you. That's pretty good, isn't it? That's pretty powerful, isn't it? That's, that's m magic. Due to her small HP pool and weak armor, it's not recommended to engage in open confrontations against other battleships or to engage in extended fights against other ships. Okay. So hit and run radar battleship thing. 27 millimeter plating and it's American. So probably no icebreaker. 27 millimeter nose means heavily overmatchable. Heavily overmatchable nose. Same health pool as Georgia. Same. Repeater 26. Fix for point range 21. HE shell armor pen 59. Chance to cause fire. Okay, the HE is significantly faster than the AP. 9.5k AP alpha. That is kind of cringe. 25 second reload. 25 second reload. Twenty-five second reload. Huh. Right, so what if we do like twenty-five and then we slot the the reload mode? We got twenty-two. And then let's say we proc Halsey as well. Okay. Okay, so oh plus AR on top. You probably won't slot reload though because it's American. You probably slot the dispersion. If you can slot it on it, because it already has improved dispersion. It's not it's not a guarantee you can slot it. Because generally when Wargaming improves uh some parameter, they, they limit you from building it even further. Uh like a good example is uh, the brick. Oh a good example is the brick, like uh, Brick got improved. Uh, Brick got improved acceleration, and at first, when Brick came out, you could also slot the acceleration mod, so you had improved acceleration plus acceleration mod, uh, and then they removed it. They removed the option, so you can no longer slot that. So we'll see if you'll be able to slot this thing on it or not. If you can, obviously you're going to run it. This thing is insane on all battleships. Um, more dispersion is never bad, but uh, we'll see if you can. We'll see what they decide. We'll see what they decide. We already have Illinois. This isn't an Illinois. Illinois is an HE spammer piece of shit that can't be citadeled. This thing is improved AP angles. It's gonna and it's gonna have speed boost, so it's gonna play different than Illinois. Maximum dispersion two hundred and twenty-five at what twenty twenty-one kilometers. Two hundred twenty-one, two hundred twenty-five at twenty-one kilometers. That's almost Yoshino. Yoshino is 205. Wait, hold on. Let me... 217 at 21.3. And this thing is 225 at 21. That's Battlecruiser Dispersion. That's Battlecruiser Dispersion. It's Battlecruiser Dispersion with uh, 1.7 Sigma. Though. That's not very impressive, but it's still going to be pretty nifty. That's going to be pretty fucking scary, honestly. That's going to be pretty goddamn scary. 11 came in airstrikes. Best ASW in the game. Second arm and 7.5 came base. 10x2. Okay. See what they do. How's the AA? 8 flak. So, once again, something that has more AA than Montana, I think. Mid range five to nine. It's seventy five percent accuracy though, but hey, it'll do something. Maximum speed thirty three knots. Turning circle eight ninety. Rudder shift sixteen five. Okay, that shit handles so much better than uh, the normal American PPS. Then, holy shit, that thing handles so much better than the current American PPS. Then, sixteen five. Surface detect sixteen four. 16.4. Wait, so this thing somehow is going to get really shitty. This, well, not shitty, but uh, 
We're so used to all new BBs getting bonkers fucking conceal, man. 13-3 conceal. Okay. Explain to me how Vermont is going to be stealthier than this thing. Or, or Loria is stealthier than this thing. What the fuck? Like, their concealment makes no more sense. I guess, I mean, it, it, considering the slapping radar on it, I guess we should be grateful the concealment is shit. Brick is more stealthy. Brick is much more stealthy. That was, what, 13-3? Brick does, uh... What the fuck is Brick? Brick does 12-6. Brick's got a 700 meter ambush range on this fish. <laughs> the stealthy burger, man. Okay. Damage control, standard. Repair party. Yeah, it gets the 40 second the 40 second cooldown on it. This thing is really good. This is honestly, I think this is one of the best repairs in the game. Um I mean it depends on of course the playstyle of the ship. Like Montana's heal fits Montana really well, but um I think this one is really, really good. It's a good balance of being up 24-7 and still healing quite well. Engine boost 15%! Oh, ain't no fucking way! Okay, so... This thing does... 40 knots. 40 knots. 39A. 39A. That's Massa Hill. Yeah, it's Massa Hill. Or Ohio Hill. Or Georgia Hill. Whatever you want to call it. They all have the same heal. Uh... Yeah, 40, knot, 40 knots, Rhode Island. 39.8. So, once again, this thing is going to be faster than most of the old DDs. Like, the speed the speed boost power creep has been insane in this game. It's actually been really fucking nuts in this game. People don't really even understand how, how fucking bonkers it's been, but, like... When you, when you sort by fucking speed on, on destroyers... Um, there's a bunch of DDs that, that, that do these kind of speeds. There's a bunch of DDs that do these kinds of speeds. And, and this thing is going to be running around at Grozovoy fucking speeds. It's like... Bro. Bro. Every fucking battleship nowadays is insanely fast. Surveillance radar. Duration 40 seconds. Detection of ships 9 kilometers. It's a 9k radar. That's really inconsistent. Why does it get a light cruiser radar? That's really inconsistent. Isn't Missouri radar 9.5? Why is this thing a 9? It makes no fucking sense. I mean, I guess we should be happy that it's a short, shorter radar. But what the fuck? Because it's American? How does that make any sense? The moon has 10k radar. I remember when they did this whole... They gave us this whole speech about how they they were normalizing radar ranges uh, across the board. So... There was going to be the Soviets at 12, heavy at 10, and uh, light at 9. And then after that, they just started going completely bonkers with fucking random radar durations left, right, and center. And now every that entire normalization rework has completely gone out the window because everyone has a fucking random number. Fighter spotter. Okay. Of course, of course you, you slot surveillance unless you're dented. It's so... Like, it's, this radar is actually really nuts. Because uh, this thing is going to run at you 40 knots. It pops out around an island running at you 40 knots. And, and it's being helmed by a one-for-one one gamer called uh, Bob the Trader. He loves trading one-for-one. One. That's his fucking goal in life. He queues up and he tries to ram the first ship he sees. He comes around the fucking corner doing 40 knots. You're a destroyer. You see him. You try... You Turn around, by the time you turn around, he's already in radar range. He fucking drools on the keyboard, accidentally hits the radar button. Then his secondary starts smashing you, and he starts fucking running at you with radar running. Secondary is blazing and fucking 12 guns lobbing shells at you. Your team, of course, kills him, because this is a squish squishy piece of shit. But he's going to trade one for one guaranteed and get you killed. So that's going to be really fun, for sure. That's going to be a really fun experience. Constellation radar is 10 kilometers at tier 8. Yeah, and that's a fucking battleship. That's a battleship with radar. So we have Constellation at tier 8 with a 10 km radar. We got Missouri at tier 9 with a 9.5 km radar. And then we got 
This thing, Rhode Island at tier 10, with a 9 kilometer rip. How, how is anyone supposed to even learn, like, how is anyone supposed to learn this game without memorizing every fucking value by heart? Because there's no fucking consistency at all. There's like no consistency at all. Borodino has 12k radar, which is a tier 8 Soviet battleship? What? But Nimsky, that's a tier 10 light cruiser, 12k radar, but then Otsukov, who's a tier 8 light cruiser, 9k radar, Salem has a 8.5k radar, and then destroyers, they can be Gdansk 9km or they can be 7.5 like Ragnar. Like. What? And Indianapolis, that's tier 7, I think has a 10km radar. What? But Atlanta, that has a radar, has some, some super short 8km radar or something? It makes no fucking sense. Oh, Ochikov had a 10 camera radar. You're right, you're right. 8. No, Atlanta had 7.5 camera radar, like the destroyers. How the fuck is anyone supposed to keep track of this without having every single number stored up in their skull? Especially since Wargaming, every time they add something, they're not even sticking to their old fucking numbers. They're just pulling a fucking number out of a hat and go, we'll give it this value. <laughs> you better learn it or it'll kill you. And then they wonder when people are installing all these mods that tell you wh what what consumables and what shit the ship does. When I'm seeing people that play this game for as long as I do, and they see some ship and they're like, what the hell is that thing? What does it do? Does it have torps? <laughs> like, how fast is it? Like, there's so many ships in the game, even veterans who keep up with their blogs and follow this, sh this shit are starting to get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of numbers. Fucking bonkers, man. Absolutely bonkers. But yeah, uh, Rhode Island looks interesting. I wish it wasn't a... I wish it wasn't a... Radar cruiser. Or a radar battleship. But besides that, it looks interesting because it looks like a ship that can be punished pretty easily. So it looks like it has damage, but it can be punished. Which is generally ships I like. I like ships that can deal damage, but they have weaknesses. And 27mm nose and... If it got anything like Georgia Citadel, it should be smashable as well. Um, so we'll see. Also, um, uh, three, five, six millimeter guns mean you can angle against them. Will the will improved AP angles will be enough to make up for make up? We'll see. We'll see. Remains to be seen. It might be complete garbage. It might be dead on arrival, or it might be pretty okay. The split gets a nine camera. <laughs> Okay. With test ships, we have over 700 ships in game now. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, mm. I mean, we looked at this. It hasn't been updated. We haven't. We haven't looked at that thing. I mean, this thing hasn't been updated. I wish this guy didn't made an update on this one, but this gallery is is very telling, isn't it? This was uh, share of premium ships. From May 2016 to April 2023. I wish you updated it again because it's 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 increasing all the time. But in 2016, the percentage of premium ships was 30.7%. In, in the current state, the percentage of premium ships is almost half. Like, uh, type of ship added between 2016 and 2020. 60% tech tree ships, 40% premiums. From 2021 to present. 66.4% premium ships, 33% tech tree. <laughs> like, and on the tech tree ships, they don't follow any rules. They just do whatever the fuck they want. So it's, it gets, I mean, this looks even worse now. This is me. This is, this, this guy is six months ago. It's been half a year. If he did it now, it would look even worse. It's getting, it's probably going to be like three quarters of a pie chart at this point. It's, uh, <laughs> it's completely bonkers, man. <laughs> completely bonkers. The game's overall design has gotten out of control. They, they boxed themselves in with so many power creep things. They boxed themselves in so hard with so many power creep things. Like, it's... 
they, they've added so much shit to the game, you can't add a normal ship anymore, or it'll come across as garbage. And then sometimes they just give... Either they throw out something completely overpowered, and they don't seem to care, or they throw out something completely underpowered, and they don't seem to care. It's like... I've, it's it's kind of just like they're... They're just throwing out ships without any, any extra thought being given to them. Great examples is... Uh, the super ships that have been out for a long time, like Annapolis and Conda, should have gotten nerfed ages ago. Tech tree ships like St. Vincent should have gotten nerfed ages ago. And then on the other hand, tech tree ships like Yodo. It's complete garbage. Like, absolute ridiculous garbage. And they've done nothing to, to improve it. It's... Uh, I don't know. I feel like they just stopped caring about anything resembling balance.